uh, such a great turnout for this function. Um, when I approached uh, these two gentlemen about uh, being involved somehow, they asked me if uh, I would like to be uh, the moderator for the event, and I, I was very humbled. Uh, this is my first time uh, moderating a uh, public uh, uh, political debate, debate, but uh, I've been doing theater for 30 years, and I know most of these candidates. I don't know this microphone, so I'm going to really try my best to uh, modulate. Um, we've already, uh, you've already heard some of the ground rules. Uh, yes, please, if you're if you want to engage in a conversation in your own political debate, outside uh, that door would be the prime spot for it. Because I'm sure you're all here in this limited amount of time to hear what these six people have to say about the issues. So, um, you know, if someone has to tap you on the shoulder to ask you to just, uh, you know, bring it down or, or go out there, I'm, I'm hard of hearing myself, so I, uh, I'm going to be trying my very best to hear the answers to these questions. We have four prepared questions. Each candidate will have 90 seconds to answer, and then 30 more seconds for rebuttal. Based on the suggestions, the questions that you've written down, our screeners will select two more questions that we will throw to the candidates, and then if time allows, we may have uh, time for final thoughts before we wrap up at 8 o'clock. If people feel like engaging in further discussions, I'm sure will be opportunities somewhere in this business district to, uh, to continue with uh, socializing and discussing. This is the first of uh, many debates, I hope, all across the city, and I'm hoping that uh, there are candidates from some of the other wards and for mayor that are here this evening want to kick off uh, the election season. So, again, without further delay, let's get things rolling. What I'd like to do right now I will introduce our first candidate. And grab my glasses, sorry, I need my reading glasses as well. The candidates all supply uh, short bios that I can introduce them with. Uh, Remy Bobo is a recognized community leader. Remy has spent her professional career in senior management and advocacy in the nonprofit sector. She has spent her career working for men and women living with HIV AIDS, at-risk youth, women and children, and marginalized communities. She's an active volunteer. She sits on the board of directors for four agencies in Windsor, Essex. She's the mother of two daughters aged seven and nine and lives on Hall Avenue with her husband and children. Ladies and gentlemen, Remy Bobo. Here we go. So, yes, we're here. 
without even going to hand it off. Our, our next candidate, proceeding in alphabetical order, is Brian Casa. Brian is a resident of Ward 4 and has been for the last 12 years. He's done volunteer work for organizations such as St. John Ambulance and the Heart Defects Society of Windsor and Essex County, where he served as treasurer and president for five years. Recently married to his wife, Debbie, and they have four daughters between them. Brian is hoping, Brian is hoping to bring new blood and ideas to Windsor's City Council when he is elected. Ladies and gentlemen, Brian Kata.
possess the experience and ability to generate economic growth and create jobs. How do I add? How do I know this, you ask? Because I already have. Uh, throughout the rest of the evening, I hope to show you the strength of my four pillars and how we can all make Windsor a better city. Our next candidate is Victoria Cross, a lifetime dedicated to making our city a welcoming home. She's the founder of Citizens for Fair Taxes, the Board Secretary for Handy Transit Windsor, and a board member of the Friends of Ojibwe Park, involved in making waves with residents. She was a founder and or active participant in a number of key Windsor organizations spanning 30 years of organizing including the Windsor Folk Music and Art Society, the Essex County Citizens Against Fermi II, which is now part of the Citizens Environment Alliance, the Friends of Patch Island, Windsor Women's Incentive Center, the Coalition Against NAFTA, Save Our Station, CBC, Citizens for Fair Bargaining, the AIDS Committee of Windsor, the Windsor Coalition for Peace and Disarmament, you get the idea. It goes on and on and on. Amnesty International, the Commonwealth Games Committee, and many others. Victoria has a, a political science and law degree from the University of Windsor and a master's degree in law from King's College, University of London. She's a writer and a spokesperson, was a regular on Percy's panel. Anybody ever listen to the Percy panel? Remember that? Our current MPP uh, on CBC, she was a regular panelist and has often appeared on CTV and the HL. Victoria is a music theater and film buff and avid gardener and needleworker. Ladies and gentlemen, Victoria Cross. Thank you so much, Mark. And thanks to all of you who are here. And you bet I want your vote on October 27th. October 27th and this election is one of the most important in decades and it should not run on slogans. I do want to say that Ellen Halberstadt is here in the audience and I appreciate that he's working to the very last minute for Ward 4. I've worked with Alan, I've argued with Alan, but I'm happy to say that together we have had the best interests of this city in our hearts. We have to dig in. This is our ground. This is where we raise our families and leave our legacy for the future. The issues in this election are many and varied, from real poverty and people struggling to get by, to building and rebuilding our infrastructure, from transit accessibility, to people's flooded basements because of cutbacks, to proper sewer construction. It is about affirming that which is best in the community, not setting up competing interests, bicyclists versus drivers, the north end against the south end, those who care about asphalt or paths in parks against those who are scraping by to get food on the table. We can do this work for. We can keep the heart in Windsor. 15 seconds. I look forward to your questions. I'm ready to serve. I have sat on city committees. I fought city committees. I'm not here to speak for people. I'm here to work with people to make Windsor and Ward 4 the strongest, best city it can be. I hope you will choose me.
But uh, I just wanted to mention that four years ago, I walked down the street to uh, visit a neighbor of mine and uh, to propose the idea of the old Rockwell Residence Association. And you know, this kind of event is exactly the kind of event that I envisioned us partaking in when we did that. And, and it makes me incredibly happy that we've got the most engaged uh, citizenry in the entire city right here in Ward 4. So the Old Buffalo Residents Association, the community building exercises that strengthen the tie while well, improving the community we have in common. You know, making our corner of the world a safer, cleaner, and more attractive place that builds civic pride while attracting residents and visitors. These are also the goals of my campaign. Everything that, uh, that, that we've worked for here is, uh, is embodied in me. And I feel that working on community-focused projects for nearly a decade and a half positions me as your best choice as candidate, or as uh, the, out of the six candidates here for council. Many of the other council, uh, candidates for council are vying for your vote will tell you all the great things that they're going to do once they get elected. See, I didn't wait to get elected before I got involved in my community. From chairing committees and council to starting a residence association, from lobbying to make uh, Windsor a more bike-friendly community, to partnering with the university to create the Earn a Bike program to teach uh, our youth how to work on bikes. From hosting an award-winning blog on urban design to hosting a radio show with the same focus, bringing experts into Windsor to help guide us to a better future. From helping to organize lobby groups to keep our hospital in the core of the city, to working on keeping the costs of urban development low in our effort to uh, support more infill development. These, are, these things, we don't need to be elected councillor to achieve. You just need a passion for your community and a desire to get involved. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. And then right down here next to me, stage left, we have Howard Hughes. It is much more than simply a part-time job. 
As an actively retired person, I'm looking forward to giving Ward, ward 4 constituents the intensive, full-time attention they deserve. Ten seconds. Please give me your opportunity to make Ward 4 in the city of Windsor a wonderful, progressive, and dynamic community I truly believe it can be. On October 27th, take your neighborhood to city council by voting for me. Howard Weeks to be your full-time city councilor for Ward 4. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, as Brett mentioned right in his opening remarks, uh, we are very fortunate that we have uh, such a strong slate of candidates uh, to choose from. Uh, I don't have a sign on my lawn yet. I was hoping that after tonight, I'll be able to, to choose. Um, I, I'm not sure if I've gotten everyone's literature, but they were encouraged to bring to bring their campaign materials here so that they can share them with you this evening. If you haven't had a chance to have a one-on-one, -on -one, perhaps you can set up an appointment, have a little chat afterwards. But I think we've got a really strong, strong group of people that have thrown their hat in the ring. So let's hear it for them all right now. Unprecedented, and 
uh, from them allowing public input to the property owners uh, to step forward with parcels of land. Uh, so it kind of it, it's putting you in a niche situation where do you go against an open, transparent process, or do you prefer to be dictated by a board, as has been done for uh, previous hospital selections? I know Shane Mitchell, uh, who spoke earlier, uh, has stated that the vast majority of residents live uh, in Windsor, Tecumseh, or LaSalle, so about 70% of the population uh, being within uh, uh, within a close uh, radius. Uh, this can be used as even more reason for the hospital to be located in Windsor. Uh, not to mention the possibility of uh, helping reduce emergency response times uh, and accessibility by uh, for seniors or those without transportation, uh, among other reasons. Uh, a perfect example of a recently built urban hospital is the Bridgepoint Hospital in the, in the GTA. It's a state-of-the-art hospital built in a core neighborhood uh, and also includes preservation of the historic buildings within the design. Uh, having two existing hospitals shut down and gutting core neighborhoods, uh, you know, and, and stripping the, the residents of, of jobs and spin-off businesses uh, is simply not acceptable. Uh, however, acting prematurely before the process is concluded isn't the way to act. That's your time. You'll have a chance for the first time. Thank you. There's not a person in this room who is opposed to improved health care facilities in Windsor and Essex County. The question is not whether we need new facilities and greater access to services, but where and how they will be located. We don't have to look farther than across the river to see what happens when a city's tax base is eroded by placing major facilities in such a way as to leave depopulation in the city's heart. For Ward 4 residents, the outmigration of the health and allied professionals to be closer to hospital facilities can drain our neighborhoods of jobs, homeowners, growing families, those who shop in our stores, in addition to putting greater stress on our services. The process of choosing a site, as Philippa remarked, is continuing. If the Site Selection Committee determines that our new facilities will be placed in a location that will tear the heart out of this war, you can be assured that I will continue the fight to keep our neighborhoods strong and stable. If that means fighting an alleged consensus plan, so be it. And I will fight at City Hall, fight at Queen's Park, and fight for more federal transfer payments for health care from Ottawa. I've done it before, I'll do it again. You know, it's wonderful to see so much uh, passion about uh, keeping the hospital in Windsor. I remember when, they, uh, when the hospital came, first came out with their, uh, their criteria for 1568 to Greenfield site. That's when the Citizens for Accountable Mega Hospital Planning Process actually was born. It was a bunch of us meeting in a local coffee shop and saying, you know, this can't happen. If the hospital, which it, it's, it's a provincial authority, right? The, the province is determining the, the, the process, and they are being, as you know, mentioned, they are being a lot more transparent than they have in the past. However, what we need to do as a city is really devote the same kind of attention that we've done with the Great Parkway. Remember when Sergio Marchioni was uh, was talking about uh, you know, withdrawing Chrysler from the city? As, as, as a city, we stood up and said, "No, this is way too important." You know, it's it's not our authority, but we're going to have to say folks to stay with it. That's exactly what we have to do with the uh, with the hospital. If you think about the, the infrastructure that surrounds hospitals, all those little doctors clinics, the medical labs, all those things, they are built there because of their proximity to the hospitals. If the hospitals leave and then head out to a, to a greenfield site, all those places come with them. We're going to lose a lot of hospital and medical healthcare infrastructure that will leave the city. And then another thing nobody's talking about as well is we have a resource right across this, uh, the, the river, seven minute hospital transfer time to, to go over for a lot of the procedures that we cannot do locally. We move that out to the Greenfield site somewhere, we lose that. So, so this is vital to our community and we have to fight to keep it here. Thank you. Thank you. I have done a little bit of research about the hospitals that we have now in Windsor and I understand that there is a problem with uh, wait times being too long, with uh, infection uh, rates being too high, uh, and things of that nature. Um, I think that what we should be doing is especially in these 
is fine to have a new mega hospital, which in itself I think is a, is a good idea in that it would bring in a lot of uh, very professional medical uh, personnel from other areas. Uh, and then we could have that somewhere a little bit more accessible to the rest of the county. And that is one of the reasons I think that, uh, that there's a move to put it out near uh, Walker Road and uh, Division Road and all that, right that way so that the, uh, the people in the rest of the county will be able to access it. And I think that's fine as long as we maintain and keep the two hospitals we have now. Um, I, don't, I, I think that uh, too much tearing down in Windsor. We are just about to tear down the city hall that we have uh, because uh, it's felt that it isn't uh, maintained properly or it needs work. Uh, against that, uh, I think we should work with what we have. And when we find that up to speed, then we can make improvements so, from yeah, there. Thank you. Thank you. Now, with the final word before we get into the bubbles. Ready? Thank you. Question, Philip, and for, for all the work that, uh, that that camp is doing. Uh, a couple things. So the process, as uh, as Adrian was mentioning, is actually unprecedented. Uh, the fact that we're being asked for public input in this way doesn't generally happen. Uh, what I'd like to see happen, though, and maybe to add to that a little bit, is, is more of a conversation as well, not only about the site, which I think should be in Windsor uh, and should be located to the closest population density. Uh, that being said, I'd really like to see more discussion about the services that are going to be provided. How can we be more creative? Uh, how can we work together with other partners, both provincial, um, in the states, uh, and, and federal partners to be able to enhance the services that we uh, that, that we're going to be implementing at the new hospital? Um, if you, you asked sort of what would the impact on Ward 4 be. Ward 4 is, um, is comprised of a lot of young families. It also has a lot of seniors. I have two young kids who, unfortunately, uh, one of them goes to the hospital on a regular basis. I need that emergency room to be close to home. And I know a lot of families here feel the same way. Um, we have a large uh, senior population here who often has to access those, uh, those emergency services. And a large group of people who use that emergency room as needs of primary care, uh, which is entirely other issue that we need to address, but that's what's happening now. Uh, if it does leave, uh, leave or for leave this general area, it's going to have a huge impact here. Uh, personally, it'll have an impact on my family, and I know that it'll have an impact on others as well. Uh, what are we going to do about that? Uh, Windsor has shown to be, uh, to be the kind of community that doesn't sit quietly when, uh, when, when we're affected by, uh, by negative decisions. So I think Windsor will definitely stand up for himself on this one. Okay, thank you. So we've had a chance to hear from all sorts of candidates. We're going to have 30 seconds each to uh, you know, further your point, to uh, you know, cross swords, uh, so to speak. If you if you heard something that you definitely disagree with or you want to question yourself, you've each got 30 seconds now uh, along the same line. Uh, the only thing I'd like to say is nobody for sure knows where this new mega hospital is going to go. It could be in Windsor, it could be out in the county. That's something we don't know about. Personally, what I would like to see is a couple of 24-hour clinics in Windsor that would be able to take some of this load off of the emergency rooms so that wait times are lower for emergencies, not just for somebody that comes in and needs a stitch. He can go to a clinic, get treatment there, instead of having to wait six to eight hours in an emergency room. Thank you. That was almost right on 30 seconds. Thank you. Now, we've all mentioned uh, however, has anyone seen where these seniors are actually living? Are they living in the core or are they living on the outskirts? Um, well, I, I personally would love to see the hospital remain uh, here in Ward 4 and within the city. Um, it's not about my preference. It's about looking at the facts provided by an open process, unprecedented process, and making the best uh, decision, an uh, informed decision. And it's about being responsible. That being said, this is one of those incidents where residents standing up, being vocal, uh, speaking to their MPs, and, and, and fighting the process can make a bigger difference than any municipality can.
We have to fight together to make sure that we rattle the cages at both the provincial and federal level. The city of Windsor has unfortunately been the object rather than an involved partner in making sure we get the transfer dollars from the federal government to the province and then to us. We have to fight at all levels. Thank you. I just wanted to add real quick uh, to the comments that I made before about the, the opportunity that is here before the city of Windsor as well. We have a, we have a groundbreaking redevelopment plan that we really should utilize for this new hospital. We'll get rid of uh, some of the urban light, we'll keep the, uh, the new mega hospital in where the infrastructure is already here, water, and sewerage, traffic infrastructure, public uh, transit. So that is something that we shall also do. And also get, a, get in touch with CAM too, because we need, uh, the CAM needs as many names backing their initiative as possible. Thank you. Again, I really think that the discussion should be more about what are we going to do with the hospitals that we have already. It uh, seems to me that this whole uh, discussion about the site for the new hospital is uh, getting in the way of discussing what we presently have. And if I'm elected, I would really like to see if there's a way to keep these hospitals going, to uh, find money to, uh, to, to maintain them and make them better hospitals. And uh, then instead of having one big hospital, we can have two medium hospitals and one mega hospital. And that's what we deserve. Uh, it's one of the, mo the lowest amounts in the province and more can be done. Uh, the 
progress of culture in the city if property supported can be another economic driver uh, and helps diversify our city. Uh, I know this because I invested my own money uh, into organizing cultural events uh, throughout the city with huge success. A success that saw spillover into to, you know, businesses in the vicinity uh, that were making money off of, off of our, our events, which was fantastic to see. Uh, once again, I, I'd like to say that the experience I offer is based on action and positive results. 15%. Also, I would love to see the adoption of tax breaks and incentives for artists' live workspaces. Uh, cities like Montreal, Hamilton, and Toronto have taken the lead and have seen success with similar incentives uh, and investment in, in, that help gentrify and, uh, and bring more investment to neighborhoods that needed it.
structures uh, that are suffering from, from blight, and uh, uh, one of them uh, for sure is right down on Devonshire Road by, uh, by uh, Riverside Drive, that huge building which has been uh, recently abandoned for the longest time. If I'm elected, I'd like to see if there's a way to turn that into an artist community uh, to make it out of events. Uh, 
uh, or that sculpture part, the Windsor sculpture part. Please make yourself uh, available to go down and check it out later, Shine, because this is new art. This is something that will be happening on a regular basis, and this is uh, funding that's come from the Odette family bequest and matching funding from the city. Um, so yeah, if in your 30 seconds, if you could speak directly about um, city funding, sourcing other, other uh, higher levels of government funding, but let's talk dollars here in 30 seconds. There's actually one thing, with all due respect to the 1% that Remy mentioned and what the city proposed, that's just spending money for the sake of spending money. And it, as a small business owner, I understand the need to actually spend money responsibly uh, and being fiscally responsible. By providing the tax incentives to create good workspaces for the artists, you put the onus on them to actually create a business plan to be, to be successful. And that's how you can cre create long-term success and sustainability in the arts. Cool. published an article about the essential nature of repertory theater and regional theater to the development of a full and rounded arts community. Um, I think that that's something we should all explore. Repertory theater is very important. The city master plan allows us the opportunity to create those parts of art districts that mean that we get money from various sources, including the provincial and federal governments. Thank you. My question. I think what we need to do is move past the idea that investment in the arts is, is a handout. Uh, it's not a handout. It's uh, you know, the return on investment for every dollar spent on arts and cultural spending is, is five to one, and that should be factored in, you know, in our operating budgets. And because there's real money value there, there's uh, it, it, increases value of real estate, increases value of everything. Once we monetize it like that, we can sell it a lot better. So that's what we have to do. Thank you, Chris. I think we should uh, create an incentive for the city and the city council to promote our artists' community and the great art that we have all over Ontario and all over the world and, and increase uh, artist tourism uh, so that people from uh, many parts of this see the great art that we have, spend their money, and uh, it's a win-win for everybody. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Yeah,
but she had, uh, she also framed a question for us that was uh, uh, on behalf of the Ontario Real Estate Association. So this is uh, all falling under the heading of infrastructure and development. With the planning committee, uh, we sat down and talked about urban design, reviewing plans, and public input as to site control and, and brownfield redevelopment and, and the role of BIAs. Uh, it was brought to my attention that Windsor's commercial tax rate is among the highest in the province of Ontario. And I want to thank whoever uh, wrote down on uh, one of these cards. I wanted to fold it into this question because I wanted to find out how these uh, candidates would address their support for a thriving business community. This question is very specific. What role can council play in addressing the increasing vacancies of the commercial space? And in this case, along Ottawa Street and Tecumseh Road East, if you could answer that in terms of the entire city as well as the work for it. Good for it. Well, development and zoning are linked, of course. Uh, development is the big picture and zoning is the details. Lawyers are fond of saying that the devil's in the details. And the devil can be in the details of how we build our communities. And yes, Windsor has a commercial tax rate that is high and that's why I want to look at all of our taxes dealing with the Fair Tax Commission and I hope there'll be a further question about taxes. I've participated in many zoning discussions. In fact, I was at a zoning meeting just last week about the status of Market Square and its development after his coach showed me their notification letters. If we want livable, workable, walkable neighborhoods in Windsor, we have to make sure the development and zoning both meet the needs of the community. And we have to make sure that end runs are not uh, completed behind the backs of people. Much of the north end of this north C is C2 zoning, which allows for offices and uh, apartments above. This is a very important character this war. 15 seconds. Uh, I don't want to change that. We have all sorts of things in this war. And I believe any new development should have affordable housing as component as well as a commitment to green values. So um, as far as development fees, no, thank you. Each time the city waves fees.
talked to a lot of shop owners on Ottawa Street or on uh, Tecumseh Road who uh, invariably have one uh, the same refrain, uh, commercial property taxes too high, uh, and uh, they have a lot of difficulty staying in business because uh, obviously um, if they have uh, this kind of expense, as, as well as all their other expenses, uh, it just becomes uh, impossible. Uh, so, of course, uh, if I was on city council, I would find ways, work with council to try to lower commercial property taxes, use provincial incentives that's been spoken about, uh, and, and, and like that. Secondly, I think that uh, when you want to go shopping at Ottawa Street, when you want to go shopping downtown, you have to look at your change purse, you have to make sure that you have enough money to pay for parking. Uh, when you want to go up to the Devonshire Mall, that's not, that's not a factor. The box on this. I think that uh, the city is nickel and diamond uh, with the parking uh, situation. Uh, they're, they're trying to get little bits of money, uh, and whereas if they would reduce uh, parking uh, uh, costs, uh, they could make a lot more money in taxes by bringing uh, people into uh, city uh, places, uh, streets like Wyandotte, uh, all these places where it's just a pain in the butt. You can't go shopping because you have to.
own safety. We've done so much and we've built such a strong community that I want to populate this. I want to fertilize the entire board for this. And, I, and, and as, as a counselor, if duly elected, I, I, I will promise to use some of my discretionary funding to start getting some of these resident associations off the ground. Because you know what, they, they, need, a, they, they need a push. They need some administration to help them get over that, uh, get over that hump. They need money for printing, for a website, that type of thing. And it's, it's that important to me, and it solves so many issues within the community that I mean, it's silly not to do this. Because it, you know, getting those people together, alley cleanup, street cleanup parties, uh, that alleviates so much crime, light, and everything in the community. So I think it's incredibly important that we nurture strong communities.
um, but also to, to help build bonds between neighbors uh, that encourage us to look out for one another and make a neighborhood a great place to live and that people are proud to call home. Uh, it is also part of my belief that strong, vibrant, and safe neighborhoods are the foundation of which a prosperous city is built on. Uh, so the second problem is the possibility of implementing community foot patrols by the Windsor Police. Uh, police departments across the country are returning to foot patrols uh, as a proven way to combat crime. So my research has led me to talk to Constable Russell uh, of the Victoria Police Department, uh, who have had huge success with their foot patrol program, uh, and they were able to do it, reduce crime, build a better a public perception of the police force without raising the police budget a single penny, which is the key part of it. Uh, in a recent study completed by the Windsor Police, only 24% of residents stated that the police have a good working relationship with the community. The foot patrol programs, like the ones I'm, uh, I'm advocating for, are proven to not only reduce that crime, but also allow residents to get to know officers and build a better public perception of the police force. And it's these types of programs which, which can make our neighborhood and our city much better. as I 
as I said, were able to do the foot patrols without increasing the police budget a single penny. Uh, they placed administrative staff on foot patrol and reassigned their regular officers, uh, as opposed to being in the vehicle, putting them in the streets. And that allowed them to actually get to know business owners, get to know the, the, the neighbors who were there, their habits, and actually see who should have been there, who shouldn't, what was out of place. And they actually built a rapport. And I really do think strong grassroots things like that, getting to the neighbors, is what, what's key to making the, the neighborhood safer. Uh, how do we 
we was measuring the economic impact of a bike having a bike friendly city. When you have a city that is designed uh, that incorporates everybody and all pieces of transportation, uh, bikes, pedestrians, buses, uh, and vehicles, it makes for more diversity, it makes for um, an environment where people want to be, where people want to live. Um, I want to talk about the food security thing a little bit more, so I think we'll hear a lot about uh, bikes, and I'll come back to that in a second. But, uh, but access to, uh, to, to food, access to healthy food, is something that is a, is, is a human right. Um, we're, we're living in Canada, we're living in one of the most developed countries in the world, and people that don't have access to fresh fruits and vegetables, decent food that they can put uh, and, and on, on their tables and feed their families is a travesty. Uh, we need to do more to support, uh, to support our local uh, community gardens. We, I was part of a community garden uh, that I started uh, with the youth uh, group actually out in the east end of uh, town. That is a fantastic uh, representation of how communities come together, uh, work together to get to, uh, to have a common goal and be able to feed hundreds of people. Opening up more community kitchens uh, and having more access for people to learn how to cook uh, different types of food I think is also something that we need to take a look at as well. And then um, last thing is making sure that yes, we are encouraging more of the uh, municipalities uh, green spaces to use as community gardens as well. Mark. 
market that's open all winter and she may need to have a plan to make sure that we have accessible fresh fruit food that includes more than this is a hobby or a tourist activity. Uh, in New York City, there's an organization called Transportation Alternatives, and, uh, and they actually have the ability, because of the vast change in the transportation system in New York, to measure the economic, uh, the direct economic effect of bicycle infrastructure on several projects. And 39% increase in sales over uh, when there was transport or uh, bicycle infrastructure in, in Seoul over uh, just regular non uh, non bicycle. So, so that really adds up to the line. It was 2001 I, I used to chair the Woods Bicycle Committee, and that's when we got the Bicycle Master and then uh, passed me and I'm sitting before council. Uh, Alan Albers, that was the one that we thank you very And it was, it, that was before cycling was cool, before it was hit, before we had uh, you know, cool bike shops and stuff. But uh, it, so, so it was much more difficult. And, uh, but we got it passed, and it's, it's creeping forward incrementally. And that's why I supported wholeheartedly the Cabana Road Bicycle. Uh, because you know then this, the, the, the roads out south winter are getting faster and faster. You know there's the families they need safe transit, and uh, and, and it makes city or communities livable. And this is something that we really have to encourage for all road users, not just cyclists, but pedestrians. Get those. I'm not even going to get to the community garden to say which I would love. But we have to get those bikes off the sidewalks because that's pedestrian space onto their own dedicated infrastructure.
means that it's unfortunate the traffic calming efforts in the city seem to have been put on the back burner, but I can assure you that one thing drivers, residents, and bicyclists all agree upon is that we need to look at calming traffic, how we regulate stops, and the speed of certain roads. I, I was just talking to some folks on Seneca and Kildare and sent a note to a friend uh, suggesting that the laser boys get out there. Okay, I get the chance to address the second part of that question now, and I've got 30 seconds. So, I, I work in uh, Montreal Road area, and I ride my bike by, because I'm a bike commuter, right by the Fort City Community Garden every day. And, uh, and to see these kids, and see everybody who's involved in that, that Fort City Community Garden, which is growing, it's like across the street, or so much different. It, it is amazing uh, for the sense of community that they're building there. And uh, I just uh, want to say, you know, we